और आज सिर्फ भारत की ही नहीं बल्कि दुनिया की निगाहें भारत के चंद्रयान मिशन तीन पर हैं। हर एक कण में कौतूहल बना हुआ है हो भी क्यों ना बस इतिहास रचने से हम एक कदम ही तो दूर हैं। इसे ऐतिहासिक पल पर हमारी सहयोगी स्वाति ने पूर्व वैज्ञानिक बी के त्यागी से बातचीत की इस बातचीत से आप समझ सकेंगे कि ताकि आप विस्तार से ये जान भी सकेंगे कि लैंडर और रोवर चंद्रमा की सतह पर क्या काम करेंगे तो चलिए देखते हैं ये पूरा इंटरव्यू So we are all waiting to hear the good news of soft landing on the lunar surface. We are waiting to witness the touchdown moment on moon. And the real job will begin for both the lander and the rover post that in studying the surface of the moon, transmitting all the data, gathering all the data, sending it back to earth. But also for the scientists really who would have to actually go through tons of data once the soft landing happens on the surface of moon, which we are all praying and hoping for. What we have here is a 3D printed model of the lander Vikram and the rover Pragyan. And this has been created by Otto Abo. Now through this 3D printed model will try and understand what is going to happen on the surface of moon post landing. To talk more about this and to understand this in depth, we have with us an expert on the broadcast. Let me introduce to you ex-scientist BK Tyagi. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Through this Thank 3D you. model, help us understand, sir, what are the changes that have been made and what is it that we are witnessing? First of all, what you know catches everybody's attention is this uh, gold plating. Why, why this, sir? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all of our women like gold very much. <laughs> Why? Because the jewellery of when you have a gold jewellery, uh, it's an inert material in a way. It, it is an, uh, very less reactive. Mm. It doesn't react. So it doesn't get ex oxidized. So your uh, 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 jewellery remain, you know, mm. as like it has uh, uh, totally new. So gold is being a non-reactive or very less reactive material is covered so, because in the space, we have a lot of radiation from the sun. Right. And uh, again, the uh, very, so many charged particles, mm. which might, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, malfunction your entire uh, unit. Right. In terms of, uh, because those all are active particles. So, to protect mm. the, uh, our, uh, you know, payload, mm. it has to be covered by that. Now, has it? increase the weight or uh, has it decreased the weight this time around uh, <clears throat> you know after what we've learned from chandrayaan 2 what about the weight of the lander and the rover uh, i think it has been reduced because hmm. there is a change in the design earlier we had five engines okay. but now it's four okay uh, only on the four direction we do, don't have the central one all right so this the uh, the uh, for that we have added additional payload hmm. for more experimentation hmm. Hmm. it is carrying i think uh, uh, four payloads. Okay. Four so, payloads in the lander. <clears throat> in the lander. Because lander has to, uh, it is fully equipped with AI. Hmm. Once like, uh, uh, you know, it is into the gravity of the moon, then all like uh, when the engine has to start to reduce the speed and where is to land, Hmm. Just to see whether the surface is, is not having any seismic uh, uh, activity. Right. So all these equipments are, it is fully equipped with that. Hmm. So it will take its own decision. All right. And because the, a lot of data has been fed hmm. into this, hmm. because our orbiter is already there. Yes. So we, it has taken uh, almost, the, uh, I think, 30,000 rounds of the oh. moon. So all those photographs, the data which hmm. we have gathered hmm. uh, to you know, uh, uh, to, to develop the profile of the right. moon, hmm. those has been fed into that. Okay, all right. So the data is already there. Now, uh, what we see here is that the ramp, of course, is already open here. But uh, yes. once the lander lands on the moon, mm -hmm. one side panel is going to unfold and create this ramp so that uh, the rover can then come out. Come out. You know, let's let's uh, take a closer look at the, the rover. What is very interesting, and let me just point it out to our viewers mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it is a six-wheeled rover. Yes. Here comes up the solar panel. Solar panel. And interesting part is that the solar panel is mm -hmm. in a vertical position. It's not like on Earth whenever you see... Mm -hmm. Hmm. On the terrace, the the situ uh, the uh, panels are in a uh, uh, like horizontal yeah, position. Yeah, they're, they're slanting yes. to receive the yes. sunlight. Yes, because hmm. the sun, you know, on Earth, we move from east to west like this. It hmm. goes over hmm. overhead also. Hmm. But here, it will not come on the head. Hmm. So it will remain on the side. It will go like this. From it will come from one side and go to this side. So this portion 
like the light hmm. should be they should exposed to the maximum time to hmm. generate energy so so it is at 90 degrees a little bit at 90 degrees yeah. on the rover and on the lander as well lander as well because Both. you're saying the sun is going to move like this yes is it will not be like on earth hmm. so that will that's why this design is like that hmm. all right so can you can we also focus on the the emblem here on one of the wheels yes. and the isro logo on yes. the other wheel here yes. is the isro logo yes. on the other side is the in, uh, is the emblem yes. so when the uh, rover moves interestingly it will uh, you know put an imprint of this a mark of india on the surface of yes earth. yes that's the whole idea because we are saying like uh, uh, you know india is is hosting its its, its footprint mm. it's putting its footprint on the unexplored region of that moon that is mm. the uh, s- southern p- pole of the mm. uh, uh, moon so uh, you would need to leave you know some mark mm. indian marks so i think these two things the emblem and and the, this isro hmm. uh, logo they will be there it will be leading our you know uh, what we call it our footmarks on the moon permanently on the surface permanently of moon. yes yes, uh, yes also can you help <clears throat> us understand a little bit about uh, the navigation cameras here how hmm. will they help uh, before before we get into that sir i what i wanted to understand was uh, how much time how much time will uh, you know the rover take to come out of the lander and uh, do we know at what speed this is going to move on the surface of moon again i think uh, this will be decided because hmm. once it is there okay uh, they will be their own they hmm. will be taking their own decision so first thing is to land on a flat surface so vikram when it will land on that then again it has a, a, the other camera also it will see that there is no hurdle hmm. there should not be the surface should not be very you know lot of up and downs or hills are not there hmm. once it it is ensure that hmm. that there is no such hurdle hmm. ahead of that then it will this ramp will open and this Uh, pragyan will come out because all right the, the we have a four payloads here hmm. that is the altimeter speedometer etc are there just hmm. to you know control the speed control the movement hmm. and also finding the suitable location for landing absolutely absolutely suppose on th- on tw- on 23rd hmm. at 6.40 uh, uh, second if it's not able to land because of some reason hmm. then the second option is on 27th all right so we have two window for for landing because hmm. if everything is okay hmm. as per planned hmm. so we will be definitely landing on the 23rd hmm. but suppose something hmm. uh, some problem comes uh, or 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 the suppose it it has uh, you know uh, the landing surface is not correct hmm. and due to some reason we could not land on that right. day so then the next date is 27 all right so then t- till then what <clears> happens so tindal are you saying that uh, the lander will stay in the lunar orbit yes yes yes, yes. it will stay in the lunar yes, orbit yes, and then same, make same, an attempt temp- on the 27 uh, yes 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 all because right. it will it will be, it is it's you know self equipped with ai hmm. so it can take its own decision all right whether i should land this place is perfect for me or not hmm. it, because once it is into the moon gravity hmm. it, it 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 is it is not under our control but all the decisions that are going to be taken would be based on the data that has already been fed, fed. into this right. the al- the algorithm which has been uh, developed hmm. uh, through that because last time what happened ke there, there was this, uh, the landing specification was very strict right right so there it there was some confusion hmm. so the height was less and but the distance from uh, the landing site was much more so there was bit confusion in in the algorithm itself okay taking a self decision so uh, it was in a you can say in a hotspot situation right so, so it, now it, we have two dates yes. so if it does not happen <clears throat> on the 23rd we still have a window and it can be attempted again on the 27th 27. let's yeah. focus a little bit on the rover and let's talk about the the uh, vision camera or the navigation camera as it is called yes. what is the primary job of that and how is it uh, going to help uh, you know the rover in carrying out uh, the maneuvers or the movement and of course the study on elemental composition you have seen that uh, the the remote control car yes so if you move that if it, it some you know obstruction is there mm. it take it turn right to to the other direction same thing this camera will be working hmm. here it will give a provide a clue whether the way is clear it can move ahead 
and uh, because it will remain in touch with Vikram. Hmm. It will be communicating to Vikram only and Vikram. With, only with the Vikram, lander. yes. So, rover will communicate with the lander, lander and lander will communicate with Earth. With, with, no, with lander will communicate with the uh, propulsion module and right. the orbiter. Okay, and then from the orbiter, the information it, it, yes, will come. Yes, All right. Yeah, yeah. So, Vikram will not communicate to us directly. Hmm through only, I think, uh, with the orbiter or hmm. propulsion module. Hmm. They are because they are still functional. Our hmm. orbiter right. is still functional. Right. And a contact with the, uh, this Vikram has already established by hmm. the orbiter. Right. It said hello to Vikram. Yes, yes. So we are going to communicate through the orbiter, the propulsion module. Yes. All the data will be transmitted in that manner. Now, yes. uh, what we do know is that uh, the lander and the rover on the surface of the moon have a lunar day's time, which on Earth is 14 yes. days. So <clears throat> two weeks is the time that uh, they have to fulfill the objective. Yes, but, yes. Uh, you know, uh, this is what we've been hearing, that the team is also sure, confident, they seem very confident that it might, might survive a lunar night, which is minus 238 uh, degrees. Here, actually, see, uh, uh, if you heard about the lunar uh, Luna mission, hmm. they were supposed to be there for a, almost one year. Hmm. Reason was they, they, they had a inbuilt heating mechanism. Right. They were using radio isotopes. Hmm. So uh, they, their function was not to generate electricity, but to keep the equipment heated. Right. So that they should not uh, they should not be any malfunction. Hmm. But here we don't have such devices, hmm. technology. Hmm. So we are are exposed to that extreme cold hmm. for 14 days. Hmm. And suppose if it Working, survive, survive. Hmm. That will be our bonus. That's All why right. the entire mission hmm. uh, the, has been kept for 14 days. The exploration will be only hmm. with the, for 14 days, hmm. and that will be an additional bonus if it's again you know survive those uh, 14 cool days. And again, when we have a uh, sun a day uh, on the moon hmm. and it's this, they're walking. I think. Uh, I think we should pray for that. <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed for that, sir. Yes. Also, before I quickly wrap up, uh, let's also talk about the importance of uh, the sunlight because uh, we were going to understand that the calculations were done in such a manner that the landing time and the availability of the uh, the sunlight yes. will coincide. <clears throat> yes, yes. It's like that. The, the, the sun will be rising. Hmm. There only when the landing will take place. All right. That's why I'm saying now the second spot, hmm. the sending, uh, second uh, landing spot 27 hmm. will be again the uh, same period where the sun will be rising. Hmm. Uh, that uh, hmm. the and because you we want to optimize the use of that 14 days optimally. Hmm. Ko din pura mil jai. So that's why either we'll be landings on site A hmm. or site B so that we should have a full. 14 days. Well, I think, you know, everybody is hoping that the landing happens on the 23rd itself. Yes, Everybody yes. is waiting for that to hear the good news of the landing. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tyagi, for helping us understand uh, how this is going to function on the surface of the moon in depth. Thank you very much for uh, joining you. us with your perspective. So that's it from this 3D model. Uh, which was created by Otto Abode that helped us in understanding what is really going to transpire on the surface of moon. But like uh, the ex-scientist Mr. B.K. Tyagi said, this is going to decide, this lander here is going to decide when the rover comes out and, you know, the functions that are going to be performed. So this is not going to be controlled from Earth. It will take its own time and decide and look at the conditions and then decide the next step. With that, we're wrapping it up here. But of course, all eyes are on uh, the countdown that has begun for the successful landing on moon.